Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the mid-month love reading for all zodiac signs. I will be doing, um, since you guys loved the pick or choose a card, we're going to do this uh, for the love readings as well. So I will be pulling out three different sets of cards. You're going to uh, take a couple of minutes. I encourage you guys to pause this video once they are aligned. Um, and you pick and choose which one you're being called towards or pulled towards and that's going to be your message particularly having to do with love and romance okay so anyways if you guys prefer this way definitely sound off in the comments below if you prefer uh, to do different separate videos for each zodiac sign then go ahead and sound off again like I said let me know and um so I hope you guys enjoy this. If you don't, let me know. Give me feedback and we'll go back to the original one. Okay. So anyways, let's get into it. I've been shuffling the cards for quite a while and I'm asking Spirit Guide to give me three sets of cards for uh, each and every single one of you guys out there. Uh, again, like I said, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes before I pull them out just so you guys can choose, or, uh, sorry, before I flip them out, just so you guys can choose. Um, and then that's going to be, okay, I'm going to put it back in there. So let's see what spirit has for you guys in regards to love and romance. All right, let's get into it. So we will be using the rose quartz, the amethyst, and the shell, okay? So let me pull these to the side. We're going to go with the rose quartz. Two, three, four. Okay, that's going to be the first set. So the first set is going to be the rose quartz. Second set is going to be the amethyst. And the third is going to be the shell. Okay, and I will be pulling out a separate card for the energies of the ending of June, the beginning, I want to say the first week of July. Okay, give me the general energies for the rose quartz. Spirit guide, please give me the energies for the Okay, well, that definitely wanted to flip over. Okay, so I will give you guys a couple of minutes so you guys can go ahead and choose whichever one you're being called towards. Again, like I said, whether it's the rose quartz, the amethyst, or the shell. And um, so I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to tune into the cards and see which one calls to you. All right, so we're going to go into the Rose Quartz reading first, and then we will do the Amethyst, and then the Shell being the final one, okay? So let's see what Spirit has for you guys, for those of you guys that chose the first set. Okay, so your general energy here is the, which one is it? Oh, the hermit. So you guys are going into, you guys excuse my nails, okay? I've just been having to deal with a lot, but <clears throat> anyways. We have here the hermit, and the hermit as a general energy could represent being guided or being spiritually guided in regards to finding your soulmate for those of you guys that have been single for quite a while. Uh, for others of you, the hermit is definitely coming out of isolation. Um, there are situations where sometimes we can't just seem to get along with our partner. So it's almost a feeling of like going in your shell or going within yourself. Um, 
to try to understand or have a different perspective on the current influences and current situation that's going uh, that's going on in your relationship. So the hermit could definitely represent this. Um, I feel that you guys are coming out uh, with a different perspective or a clear understanding of what it is that you're expecting in this relationship or how to fix and resolve issues that may be or could have been, you could have been dealing in the past. Now you do have the king of swords for some of you guys. You may be dealing with an air sign. So an air sign would be a Gemini, Aquarius, or a Libra. Um, I do see water here and or actually I see all the elements. So it doesn't necessarily mean... Um, it could just represent um, the energy. Someone's taking on the energy of the King of Swords. This could be you or this could be your partner. And the King of Swords, again, it's all about being like going within yourself and seeing things from a you know clear perspective. Um, you are being cool headed, um, seeing things very methodical in the sense of where you want this relationship to go. For those of you guys that are in a long term relationship. For others of you guys, you guys could be married as I do have the Ten of Pentacles, uh, the Ten of Pentacles here and the Ace of Cups. Um, but more than anything, it could be that perhaps there is a need for you or for your partner. It is a general reading, so it could represent you or your partner. There is a need of having spontaneity in the relationship. Um, I understand that we all have responsibilities. We all have things that we need to get done. And it could become very mundane. It could become very, um, you know, repetitive uh, in regards to relationships. Sometimes we forget to have romance in our relationship, um, especially for those of you guys that are married. So it's almost like seeing, I want to say the beginning uh, or the ending of June going into the beginning of July, there's going to be a, a, a necessity for you guys to spice up or <laughs> romance your partner, uh, you guys could be together for 20 years. It doesn't mean that the romance has to die. Um, and, and this definitely clearly speaks about that. It speaks about, you know, with the 10 of pentacles, yes, it's all about the home life. It's all about being surrounded and being with loved ones, uh, being around with your children, perhaps uh, some of the children, uh, if you guys have children that are in college or that are away, perhaps they're returning for the summer. Um, nonetheless, again, like I said, the Ten of Pentacles is all about structure and the family life, the home life. Um, but again, with the Ace of Cups here and then the Page of Wands, there's a necessity uh, to spice up the romance, to uh, not acknowledge it, even if it's like, if it's, it hasn't been so great. And I'm going to be very honest. If you guys haven't been like, that busy in the bedroom it's okay to talk about it it's okay to be you know completely honest with one another and more than anything um you know if you haven't romanced your partner in a while it's time for you to spice it up a little bit and you know remember what it was to seduce one another um with the ace of cups here there is you know reciprocation in regards to love and romance and the page of wands definitely speaks about um you know, the, the pretty much the passion being ignited once again. Um, and again, try the best. If this is you taking on the energy of the King of Swords, um, try the best you can not to be so analytical. Don't overthink. Um, for those of you guys that are a little bit more conservative, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with unleashing when it comes to the bedroom. Um, be open-minded and try new things. Um, there is a need uh, to reignite the passion within the relationship, okay? Um, now, for those of you guys that are currently single or have been single for a while, um, the King of Swords is you're definitely stuck on your old ways. You're not wanting to change certain certain patterns of yourself in the past. But I feel that going into, I want to say the end of June, going into the first two weeks of July, there's definitely a need or a desire to want stability, to want to find a person um, to build something with. And again, with the Ace of Cups, there is definitely a new person coming in. This is a, a you know, a, it's a new energy. But for a lot of you guys, this could represent with the Page of Wands, it could represent a person that is much younger than you. So it could be a person that is uh, five to seven years younger than yourself. Um, and this is a very new energy again, like I said, but 
you're definitely going to be attracted to the courageousness that they carry, the confidence that they have within themselves, and that they're not shy and they're not shying away from letting you know that they're definitely interested in you. So this is definitely, definitely a good thing, okay? So I hope you guys enjoy this. Now on to the next one, which is the Amethyst. So your general energy here is the moon card. For those of you guys that chose the Amethyst, let me put this to the side. And let me flip the cards. Okay. So you definitely have, okay, so you have the moon card and this is the energy that you're going into July. So obviously we are, you know, tomorrow is the full moon. Uh, so you're definitely going into uh, the month of July um, with the heaviness, the heavy energy of the full moon. But this can also represent not just astrologically, but it can also represent a lot of things that are being hidden or that you feel are being hidden in regards to your love and romance in regards to the relationship. Now, for those of you guys that are currently dealing with someone, and this is for those of you guys that are just starting to date or that you have been dealing with a person for a while, but it's nothing long term as of yet. It's nothing committed. Um, so basically, it would be like dating. Um, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a cancer. For others of you, you may be dealing with the Libra. For others of you, you may be dealing with a Taurus, as I do have the moon, the justice, and the high priest. Now, for those of you guys that are dating or have been dating um, someone that fits the description of a person that is not necessarily always around, so their profession could be that they travel a lot or that they go out of state or that they're back and forth, um, they don't necessarily work at one location. Now, if you are dealing with a person that, again, like I said, travels a lot, there's a lot of things that are being hidden from you, okay? And there is a need for you to come to terms and understand that if it doesn't feel right, it is not right. So what I mean by that is if you've been feeling like only when this person is in your area is when they communicate and when they're, you know, actively pursuing you and wanting to go out with you and stuff. And then the moment that they, you know, go a distance or travel because of business or whatever the situation may be, that they're not necessarily in the same city you're at and they don't communicate with you or they randomly text you or they randomly call you. If you call them, they don't answer. The reason for this is because I do see that there is a marriage here. So you may be dealing with a cheater, a person that is married. Uh, you may be dealing with the person that is actually bound to someone legally. And again, it's kind of like when they're not home, when they're away, they will play. So keep that in mind, okay? This is a very, very, it's coming through very strongly. So again, and I am being told that these, this is only for those of you that are dating someone uh, it's not long term. It's not a commitment. It's dating. When you're dating someone, going out with them, um, trying to get to the point of dating a person, uh, not dating, of committing to the person or being in a relationship. This message is for you guys. If you are in fact dealing with the person that goes um, or travels a lot, there's a lot of things that are hidden and there's a lot of things that are at play at the moment, but I definitely do see a marriage. Now, for those of you guys that are married at the moment and um, or have been in a long-term committed relationship with the moon card, there's almost a feeling of resentment. This could be either from you or from your partner. It is a general reading. So again, um, take the messages for what they are. Now, the two of wands, this is the energy of a person that likes to travel. This is a person that likes to, um, you know, they're, they're very focused in achieving and goal oriented type of energy. And the two of pentacles could represent that they've lost themselves along the way, um, it, whether it's in the relationship or whether it's just with life in general. Uh, you kind of see them like they've, they're no longer passionate or they're no longer um, pushing themselves. And I feel that it has a lot to do with they, they've kind of lost themselves in the marriage. And this could be you as well. 
Um, so if you've been if you've been in a committed relationship and you were very passionate, you were very um, goal oriented, you were just a go getter uh, when you were single, and you know as time progressed, time and life happens, um, you've kind of lost yourself. You've kind of committed yourself 100% to the relationship and there is this you know there is this emotion that is underneath that is coming to surface and it's almost a feeling of emptiness or a feeling of resentment towards your partner almost like feeling like I've sacrificed so much and you haven't put or committed the same effort you know you haven't sacrificed the way I have that type of energy and what spirit is telling you is that with this full moon coming there's going to be a lot of changes that are going to bring back balance into your life so what I mean by that is not changes necessarily in the aspect of your marriage but I mean more so to do with things that are going to come your way where you can focus and put energy towards whether it's accomplishing goals whether it's to pursue a business, to pursue something new. Um, it, it could be as simple as, you know, changing your exercising regimen, anything like that, that is going to help you find yourself again and find that balance and believe in yourself. Take those opportunities as they come, okay? Take them and in, 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 in the sense of, as an example, if you're a home at a stay at home mom or stay at home father and you kind of feel like you've sacrificed a lot and you hear about, you know, a position that perhaps starts off as part time um, and it doesn't ex like you don't have to sacrifice so much, but you can still do that on the side. I highly encourage you to do so because what's going to happen is you're not only going to kind of find yourself again or be more social, even working, again, like I said, part-time, um, if you've been kind of hiding away at home, that, you know, coming and meeting new people and just being surrounded by new people, it's almost like you're going to be refreshed, you're going to be re-energized, you're going to be passionate again, um, definitely take those opportunities, and this is like no shade towards your partner, um, I understand that sometimes, you know, we have to, um, meet you know halfway and and that's okay but at the moment in the now there is a need for you to refine yourself to tune into what you are and who you are and to pursue like don't fear pursuing a new career don't fear um going back to college don't fear none of that um there is no time frame for that whether you're 50 whether you're 22 and married it does not matter um, again, like I said, you know, go for those goals that you're trying to achieve. I feel that perhaps there may be a bit of resistance in regards to your partner. Nonetheless, when they see how happy you are, or when they see that you're really committing to it, they will encourage you and they will help you along the way. So this is definitely, definitely very beautiful for you guys. Okay. And let's go to the final one, which is the, those of you guys that chose the third set of cards. Oh, wow. Well, very different type of um, scenario here. Okay. So you guys have here the eight of cups. And the Eight of Cups as a general energy could represent, um, for some of you guys, there was an ending to a relationship or a breakup, um, as the Eight of Cups definitely does resonate with um, the loss, the, the missing of someone or something. Um, and then you have the Seven of Pentacles. You continuously keep looking towards the past or you continuously keep um, almost comparing your past relationships to the relationships that you've been in lately or that you've been or people that you've been dating um and again with the seven of pentacles and the five of cups you're definitely not over this person um and i feel that this person is not over you as well for some of you guys you may have children so if you re if there was recently a breakup or a separation and there is kids involved yes it's difficult and you've been going through it nonetheless know that spirit is here to tell you 
that things will work out for the best of your interest and for the best of your children's interest. Things will come back into balance. Um, you will be able to be on the same page in regards to your children, in regards to spending time with them and working around that um, to be able to, again, like I said, meet each other halfway in regards to the children more than anything. Um, now, for those of you guys that don't have children, I feel that you may be currently in a relationship and this is for some. It is a general reading, so it could resonate very differently. But I definitely do see that there may be a person from the past that comes back to you. You do have the Six of Cups here, and the Six of Cups is definitely nostalgia, but it also speaks about the past. And this is almost like there was some type of separation or some type of walking away from a relationship, whether it was you or whether it was your partner. But the Seven of Pentacles is definitely saying that neither you or the person have been able to move on. And I don't mean that in the sense of they haven't been in another relationship or you haven't been. Perhaps some of you guys are currently in a relationship, but you're still looking towards the past and you're still missing this person from the past or vice versa. It could be that, the you know, your partner um, has moved on or is in a relationship, but they continuously keep looking towards the past. And I definitely do see, I want to say, um, the second to third week of July, there's going to be a reconnection or there's going to be a person coming back from your past trying to communicate with you. Now, this doesn't mean that you can be able to repatch things and fix things uh, because for some of you, it could just signify that this person has moved on, um, has, you know, been in a long term relationship or um, they've committed to someone, but they still continue. They still have that connection. Um, I feel that whatever was done is still not done. There is still things that need to come out um, in regards to moving on. Again, like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a possibility of rekindling the relationship, but there's definitely going to be, there's going to be closure is what I'm hearing. Now, for those of you guys that have been separated from a person um, recently, whether you were dating them um, and there was like a walking away or an ending to a relationship. Um, I definitely do see a person from your past and this could be a past as in the person before the recent breakup that reaches out and tries to communicate with you. For others, it could be that you're returning home or they return to where they used to live. So as an example, um, if you were, if there was recently a separation in a relationship and before that, you were dealing with another person, the other person may be returning or trying to communicate with you, trying to, um, you know, restart or have a, a second go at it in regards to the relationship. But again, I feel that there's a lot of things that are still pending. There's still, there's definitely going to, this is not the end is what I'm hearing. So for some of you guys, it could just signify that there's going to be communication due to do with children. So if you're dealing with children, um, you're going to be able to be on the same or get on the same page to be able to find that balance for the best of the interest of the children. For others of you, it could represent that you're currently in a relationship, but a person from the past that you have yet to move on from is definitely reconnecting with you or trying to communicate with you. Now, for those of you guys out there, that are in a serious relationship, serious committed relationship, and a person that you still have not, like there's still emotional attachments to from the past returns, do not jeopardize this new relationship that you're in for the person from the past. Because I feel that you're going towards the past because you feel there's still feelings there, but you may be jeopardizing the stability that is unfolding before you. So this could speak about the new person that you're dealing with. I know it may seem confusing. I hope it resonates. Um, but again, if you are in a serious relationship, do not jeopardize that from for someone in the past um, that just may want to rekindle or may want to know if they can still, you know, pull the strings of your heart. So try the best you can to discern that and do not jeopardize the opportunity of finding a stable relationship for something that may be temporary again, okay? 
Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this readings. If you did, definitely comment. If you didn't, definitely comment. Let me know if you guys prefer the individual uh, astrological readings for each sign or if you guys prefer these. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share. If you have not subscribed to my channel, definitely subscribe and we'll see each other soon. Okay, bye.